Good night, guys. It is an exciting Saturday night, November 5th, 2023, here in the, in the end of the road in the swamp in Dunnellan, Florida, where uh, <laughs> I have uh, somehow... <laughs> life is strange, but life has put in my hand this children's book that I wrote in, uh, I believe, 1980, when I was 21 years old, titled Maurice and the Rainbow Maker. Maurice and the Rainbow Maker, for, so for the first time in probably 40 years, I am reading this and not knowing what is going to happen myself. So, uh, since I have nothing else to do with my life, uh, I am plowing ahead. So we just heard the first chapter, chapter one of Maurice and the Rainbow Maker, Maurice's first rainbow. And now Maurice is off on his adventure to return the dropped piece of rainbow back to the Rainbow Maker which brings us to chapter two, titled High Hopes. High Hopes. Yes. The H word. <clears throat> Take it away. Maurice had no idea how to find the Rainbow Maker, of course, as he never had reason to go looking for him. He wished he could find someone to get directions from. While he walked westward, Mo had a great time discovering the wonderful world of up above. Everything was so new to him. He splashed in his first mud puddle. He blew his first dandelion and tasted his first juicy red strawberry. He couldn't wait to tell his friends about his trip, but he knew his most important job was to find the Rainbow Maker. Because he was such a little mole, it took Mo a half hour to walk across the field. <clears throat> the field ended at a big bramble of blackberry briars which Mo could not walk through. Luckily, there was a small dirt path that followed the edge of the thorny thicket. <clears throat> Mo liked the path. The dirt reminded him of his kitchen floor back in his mole hill. Maurice rounded a curve in the path, and he saw something that made him stop dead in his tracks. Barely ten feet in front of him, there was a small rock in his path. The rock, which was brown and yellow, had a head, a tail, and four stubby legs. And it was eating blackberries! Amazing, thought Mo, who had never realized that rocks must need to eat like everybody else. He looked at a boulder out in the field. Boy, thought Mo, I bet that rock could eat a million blackberries. Mo walked up for a closer look, but when he did, the four-legged rock said, Hiss! and a gust of wind knocked Mo off his little pink feet. He got up, dusted off his gray fur coat, and tried to figure that one out. He looked at the rock. It had no head, feet, or tail. After seeing how mushrooms could turn into, could turn into toads, Mo had already learned that things were not always what they seemed to be up above. But this was baffling. He walked around the rock three times. He touched it. He kicked it. 
Finally, deciding he must have been seeing things, he climbed on top of the rock to reach a plump berry. He sat down on top of the rock and began eating. While Mo is eating, it takes a little Mo a long time to eat a big blackberry. A dainty butterfly fluttered up and landed on Mo's head. She was the color of violets in the springtime and not much bigger than a daisy. She flapped her wings a couple of times, tickling Mo's ears. I was just flying by and saw you sitting here, said the butterfly. Her voice was as dainty as the rest of her. May I ask, what brings you to be sitting on top of this turtle, eating blackberries on such a fine day? This what? asked a confused Mo. This turtle, repeated the butterfly. I must say, I have never seen a mouse eating blackberries on top of a turtle. I'm not a mouse. I am a mole, said Maurice, who was so confused by this time that he wasn't real sure he really was a mole and not a mouse. And until now, I thought I was sitting on a rock. The butterfly flew a couple of feet in the air so she could see better. You're right, she laughed. You're not a mouse. Mo was glad to hear that at least. But I am right too, the butterfly said. That is indeed a turtle, not a rock. Rocks don't eat blackberries. Turtles do. My goodness, things are not always what they seem, are they? <coughs> My name is Maurice, said Mo from his turtle top table. <coughs> I'm, I'm now around here, and I've got, I'm new around here, and I've got to lot, and I've got a lot to learn about the world, as you can tell. We all do, said the butterfly. I'm pleased to meet you, Mo. My name is High Hopes. Tell me, what does bring you to be sitting, eating blackberries atop this turtle on this fine day? Maurice told High Hopes his tale. The talk in his mother's kitchen, the beetle hunt, him, his meeting with Thelonious J. Toad, his getting hit in the head by the piece of rainbow, and his finding the four-legged rock while he was looking for the rainbow maker. The butterfly listened, fascinated by his story. My, that is exciting, said High Hopes. I wish I could come along with you and help you find the rainbow maker. By all means, please do, invited Mo. He slid down the back of the turtle and the butterfly fluttered over his head. With high hopes, Mo set off to find the rainbow maker. The footpath wound its way through the blackberry patch only <clears throat> to bump into a rusty barbed wire fence. Mo crawled under it and high hopes flew over it. <clears throat> On the other side of the fence was a lovely meadow of lush green grass sprinkled with bright yellow daisies that looked like so many miniature sunrises. Eating the lush green grass and yellow daisies was a herd of horses there was a white horse with black spots eating lunch with a black horse with white spots. A gray horse with brown feet was talking to a brown horse with gray feet. A roan horse with a blonde mane danced with a blonde horse with a roan mane. And right in front of Mo and High Hopes was a watermelon pink horse trying in vain 
to pull a daisy from between its teeth. He was all alone, and nobody would help him. May I help you get that flower out of your teeth? Maurice yelled to the horse of a different color. Yes, please, replied the pink horse, who wasn't quite sure how someone as small as, as Mo could help him. Put your head down here, said Mo. The horse lowered his big pink head, and Mo grabbed the daisy and yanked with all his might. The flower popped out of the horse of a different color's mouth, and Mo fell back into the grass. High hopes flew over to him to make sure he was all right. He was. Thank you, said the horse. Say, what brings you to, to be walking through my meadow on this fine day? <clears throat> We're looking for the rainbow maker to give him back this piece of the rainbow, said Mo, showing the horse the piece of rainbow. The horse of a different color was quite impressed. I was hoping you might know where the rainbow maker lives, said Mo. My, that is a problem, said the horse of a different color. Folks come through here all the time asking me how to get to the barn or where to pick the best berries, but this is something entirely different. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Perhaps McTavish, the rabbit who lives under that old stump over there, could tell you. Thank you, said Mo, and he started toward the old tree stump. High hopes followed, but she didn't seem at all happy. Gee, said High Hopes, he wasn't much help. <clears throat> he acted like he'd never even heard of the Rainbow Maker. Maurice looked at High Hopes and saw that some of the color had faded from her wings. Cheer up, said Mo. I bet this McTavish will know where he lives. It was hot in the sun, and both Mo and High Hopes were tired and thirsty when they got to the stump. Sitting in the shade under the stump was a plump gray rabbit with a cotton puff of a tail and floppy pink ears that were almost as long as he was tall. The rabbit was humming a tune and didn't even seem to notice Mo and High Hope's arrival. You must be McTavish, said Mo trying to break the ice. McTavish, McTavish, said the rabbit absentmindedly. Then he began humming his tune again. Maurice didn't know what to do. He asked McTavish if he knew where the rainbow maker lived. Rainbows, rainbows. Ah, yes, said the rabbit. Then he began humming, humming once more. Yes? What? asked Mo timidly. He couldn't figure out the crazy creatures that lived up above. What? Where? When? Who and why? answered McTavish proudly. Not answering Mo's question. High hopes fluttered over to the rabbit to snap him out of his daze. She disappeared inside his pink left ear, and Maurice was shocked when moments later, she flew out of his other ear. I bet your words are flying in one ear and out the other, just like I just did, cried High Hopes. She sat down on the stump next to Mo to rest her wings, which were quickly losing all their color. Mo knew it was useless trying to talk to someone who let everything he heard go in one ear and right out the other. Well, I guess we'll just have to find the rainbow maker ourselves, said Maurice. <clears throat> Sadly, high hopes didn't answer. Mo looked at her, her wings, which had been brighter than April violets an hour earlier, 
were now so faded that Mo could see right through them. He saw a tiny teardrop hanging from one of her feelers. Mo, I can't go on, she sobbed. We're no closer to finding the rainbow maker than we were an hour ago. I'm worn out. I can't fly another foot. But high hopes... If we don't find the rainbow maker and give him back this piece of the rainbow, there may never be another rainbow, said Mo. I'm sorry, Mo. You'll have to find him yourself, High Hopes sobbed. What? But Mo, wherever you go on your search and whatever happens to you, remember... You always have me as a friend. Promise me, Mo, that no matter how bad things get, you will never give, give me up. Promise that you will always keep me alive in your heart and your head because even if you cannot see me, I'll be there. I promise do you promise, Mo? Yes, I promise, said Mo, trying to sound as convincing as possible so his pale little friend would not worry. Till we meet again under the rainbow, friend, said Mo, waving goodbye. Alone again, Maurice turned toward the west. He started walking, still clutching his little piece of the rainbow. So much for high hopes, I guess. So that brings us to the close of chapter two, and we will be back with one I am familiar with. Straying from the beaten path, as Mo strays from the beaten path coming up in chapter 3 bye guys this little dog what do you think are you hanging in